Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Oyasmi Poon Poon. We are on Omnibus Volume 3 and we are looking to finish it today. I didn't record this yesterday. It's currently Wednesday instead of Tuesday. I didn't record this yesterday because I didn't want to do anything yesterday. Um, I'm in the middle of a bit of a COVID scare. My roommate, who is currently quarantined in his motherfucking room, is in his motherfucking room and he has COVID. He probably got it from his baby boy because he's got a two-year-old who brings germs back home and that's what happens. But I've been in close contact with him and I've been in close contact with the two-year-old and everything should indicate that I should have fucking COVID. <laughs> However, while I have felt slightly weird yesterday and a little bit today, I don't think I have COVID. I think I have dodged it. And I'm at risk of jinxing everything and destroying myself by even saying this, but I think my body has fought it off. I think I was exposed to it, and I think what I felt yesterday was it being in me, and I think being able to sleep for like 11 solid hours and nutrition myself really, really well has allowed me to dodge this big fucking bullet. So, here we are for Poon Poon today instead of yesterday, and that's totally okay. I didn't want to talk yesterday. I didn't want to do nothing yesterday. I just sat, and I watched a D&D campaign, and I played some dumb video games, and I did nothing else, and it was great. And it was probably necessary, and it probably helped me avoid getting really fucking sick today and for the future. So, yeah. Good job, me. Now on to Poon Poon. I'm gonna wait for this trash truck to go by. I suppose one disadvantage of the air conditioner that I have in the room is that because of the way that it fits into the window, the window is partly open, and so there's more sound leakage from outside. Again, the microphone will help with not getting most of that into the audio, but when a big trash truck goes by, you're gonna hear it, and so I'm gonna wait. Regardless, here we are for Poon Poon. Last time on Poon Poon. Well, let's get the simple thing out of the way. Mama Onodera went in for her surgery for her pneumothorax, for her collapsed lung, and was very, very scared and had some crazy dreams about how it could go horribly wrong, but we watched her awaken in the last few pages of our last reading, and she seems to be entirely fine, with Midori there to say hello when she wakes up. Ah. Poon Poon, on the other hand, went on a date. He went to an art show with Kanye, and everything went great. Uh, until it didn't. <laughs> until, until it really didn't go great at all. Poon Poon did this whole thing where he did this no, no, no. Let me take care of everything. Let me pay for everything. And um, then they went to the art show, met some of Kanye's friends, talked about some stuff, looked at some pieces of art, including one broad landscape of the Milky Way, a starry sky, which brought Poon Poon, though he didn't realize why or understand it, brought him to tears as he re remembered his friends and Aiko and all these things that he's walked away from and left behind. And he broke into tears. As the art show wound down, Poon Poon and Kanye left out into the rain and found themselves in like a bus stop or a train station stop or an overpass or something, some little shelter from the rain. And in that situation, they talked back and forth and back and forth. And Poon Poon finally, after much beating around the bush, told Kanye that he wanted to go out with her. And her response to that was quite interesting and quite insightful. No, how could I possibly go out with you? You love nobody more than yourself. All of these nice things that you did for me over the course of this day weren't for me. They were for you. They were things that you were doing in order to get me to like you. You're trying to manipulate me. You're trying to accomplish a goal. You're not really living like a person. You're not yourself. What are you doing, Poon Poon? And Poon Poon didn't get it, as evidenced by him saying, I get it. <laughs> In his own mind, he goes, I get it. I've got it. I understand now. It all makes sense. And so he gets a little bit physical and attempts to kiss Kanye, attempts to force her to kiss him. And we see now, to some extent, the echoes of what Midori has done to him. Because he doesn't understand. He doesn't know how connection or sex or people are supposed to work. He doesn't get it. And he might not ever get it. And partly, partly, that's normal. 
Partly that's normal. This is a kid going on his first date and he doesn't know what to do. He's got all these faulty expectations put into his brain by media and his friends from middle school and porn and, and Yuichi and the fact that he lost his virginity to a woman that he trusted and doesn't know how to feel about that whole situation. Poon Poon's whole relationship towards sex and sexuality and the opposite gender or just attraction in general is broken. It's broken. It's not correct. It's incorrect. And that sucks. It fucking sucks, man. Um, and I don't know if he's going to be able to overcome it because this is trauma and this is, this is the experience of, um, of fucking, fucking it up. Kanye, to her credit, smacks him across the face, tells him some pretty hurtful stuff, and Poon Poon doesn't get it still. Still doesn't get it. There's just no way in this world that Poon Poon is going to take this experience and go, you know what, I was being a jerk. Oops, I've made some mistakes. Sorry, Kanye, I shouldn't have treated you like that. Thank you for slapping me and knocking me out of my stupidity. Chances of, of Poon Poon um, having the self-awareness and emotional intelligence and situational awareness to make that happen and to view himself from an external point of view like, like we do and understand that what he's done is wrong and moreover is an extension of wrong things that have been done to him and his viewpoint on relationships as founded by his, his parents and their relationship falling apart. Hi, I'm, I'm Tiabu. My parents split when I was 10 and it was bad. And that fully has shattered my ability to form meaningful relationships with people for a good long time. So I, I know what I'm talking about on that front, at least. And then, of course, getting raped by somebody that you trusted. <laughs> Gonna cause some problems. Now, I don't want to blame it all on that, because again, I think it's important to note that fucking up in relationships when you're like 13, or however old Poon Poon is, he's early high school, so like 14, whatever. Fucking up. First relationships, first dates and stuff. Classic. Classic. Totally expected. Totally expected. The kind, the kind of things that almost all of us probably have that, you know, when we're trying to fall asleep at night, our brain goes, hey, you remember that one time when you blank, 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 blank? Like, fuck. Oh, oh no, I did do that. I think we all have those. And I think those are normal. I think they're normal. And I think Poon Poon's mistake here is a normal type of mistake to make. But that doesn't forgive it or excuse it, you know? That it's understandable that a, an ill-formed human being like Poon Poon, as he is, he is an ill-formed human. We all are ill-formed humans until we're like 30. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'll get there soon. But we're all ill-formed until we're adults. And even then, pretty ill-formed. And then Poon Poon has all these other things that are making it more difficult for him to be a full person. Ah. <sighs> For him to make this mistake is understandable, but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily forgivable. Not right now. And it doesn't necessarily mean that Poon Poon will forgive himself, but I don't think that Poon Poon thinks that he's done anything wrong. And so, what we are waiting to see is the aftermath of this situation and the way that Poon Poon figures it out and internalizes it. Because this, like many of the situations that we've had before, is a major stepping stone. But it's a stepping stone that's going to cause Poon Poon a lot of internal emotional turmoil. He just got rejected, right? That's what really just happened here. And rejection is a hell of a bitch. It's a fuck of a nut. It's, oh, uh, it's, the, it's the worst. Rejection sucks until you're used to it. Until you're used to it. Until you're a strong enough person to say, whether this person that I'm attracted to likes me or not is irrelevant to me, and I won't let it affect my mental state. Until you can do that shit, Rejection is going to suck. It's why, and I want to preface this by saying that there is, there is nothing good about the pickup artist industry. Prefaced, okay, understood, okay. But there is a reason that every, if you go and you read anything about pickup or pickup uh, courses or people who are into that kind of thing, the first thing that they recommend, almost all of them is, first off, work on yourself and become somebody that people would actually be attracted to and be, would be interested in. That's a big one. And then the second one is, go out there and get rejected a bunch. Go, go play it like a numbers game. Go say hi to random people and ask them for their phone number. <laughs> or just say hi to random people and see if they run away from you. Because they might, and you gotta get used to it. And just get used to rejection. Get used to that feeling of, no, 
because it's totally valid and totally okay for people to say no to you. And it's important that you as a person don't just give up. And that fits, again, caveat, pick up bad. I don't agree with most of the principles of the pickup artist community because they view, like, sex attraction and accomplishing relationships as, like, goal in and of itself, and that's crazy to me. That's so wrong. It's, it's so wrong. It, it, they also highly objectify women and treat them as a means to a, a satisfactory end, um, which is gross. I think it's gross. I, that's my personal opinion. You can disagree. Don't worry about it. But I want to state that out front so that I'm not encouraging people to go seek out the pickup industry because it's shit. Don't go buy books. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go talk to people. Go talk to people. And that's what I'm trying to say is that they do have a good point there, which is the more you go and talk to people, one, the better you'll be at talking to people. Two, the less afraid you'll be of talking to people. And three, the less you'll be, like, shattered by rejection. But the truest truth is that the first time and the second time and the third time and the fifth time and the tenth time, it's going to hurt. And it isn't until a lot of times later that it's not going to hurt anymore. So Poom Poom just had his first time being rejected. And he's going to hurt from it. Because he, he built up in his mind the way that many people do when they are looking to begin a relationship or just when they have a crush on somebody, right? They have a, a, an attraction to someone. They build out this fantasy land inside their head, right? Fantasies of what it would be like to be sleeping together. Fantasies of what it would be like to be holding hands. Fantasies of what she likes and wants from me. Fantasies of our life together. And women do this and men do this. And they do it in similar ways and in different ways. Women will often talk about how they've imagined their marriage and they've imagined their long-term relationship together. Things like that, right? And regardless of what you imagine, it's not real because you're not really imagining a real relationship between two people that's founded on communication and overcoming difficulties and working toward goals together. They're imagining a relationship founded on their own fantasies and their own ideas of what a relationship should be, which in context for a 13, 14 year old boy is boning, is the boom boom and the sex times. Um, and that's not who Kanye is. She's not an object for him to fuck. She's a person and she doesn't want to be treated that way. And so he's been rejected. And so he's, he's going to hurt. He's going to hurt. And I don't think he's going to be able to incorporate that pain in a useful way. I think we're going to see the internal defensive world of Poon Poon in a moment. And I think that that internal defensive world is going to be very freaked out by this situation that just occurred with Kanye. And I'm really excited to see how he actually internalizes this. Because there is a way, if Poon Poon were an emotionally mature, self-aware individual, there is a way that he could take this situation and learn from it and internalize what has happened as this is not how I should treat women or other people around me and go oops and then sincerely reevaluate himself and his decisions and then come out of it a whole person. I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to solidify exactly how he is. And I think there's a solid chance. I think there's a solid chance that there will be an incitement of like an emo poon poon phase where he's real dark and sad and feels bad about everything because he got rejected. And I'm excited to see how that goes and see what kinds of mental gymnastics he goes through, if any. And I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Asano has surprised me so many times in the course of this manga that, that me saying what I think is just context for what I think might happen, given, you know, assuming that these characters are drawn out and written like they're people and are going to act like people would really act. My expectations for a young man, first year high school, who gets rejected by a girl who... By the way, he's using as a stand-in for the girl that he really likes because he doesn't know where she is or what's going on with her anymore, and he's just trying to fuck because he's trying to fuck because he's been introduced heavily to sexuality and sexualization when he was far too young to be. I mean, the PFS stuff is the start of that, and that's titillating and interesting to a young boy anyway, but then he gets fucked by, and gets, let's not mince words, he gets raped by Midori, and that's going to change his perspective on sexuality too, bigly. Big lots, many changes. So what's going to happen inside of the tumultuous mind of this little bird boy? Probably a lot. Probably a lot. And that's, that's what I'm expecting. 
let's go ahead. I'm sorry for that taking so long. I don't know why that, that intro took so long. Let's go ahead and dive on in to the last section of Volume Omnibus Volume 3 of Oyasami Poon Poon. We're starting at page 373 of 440, or it's actually P382, but it's 373 of 440 in terms of images of the Viz Omnibus Volume. Let's get into it. <sighs> Playground in the rain. What if? Just what if? What if Kanye blew things out of proportion and told everyone at school what had happened and Poon Poon got labeled, labeled a savage prick and an attempted rapist? Condoms on the floor. And people glared at him and talked about him behind his back and hid, hid his shoes. Poon Poon didn't know how he'd manage. Okay, <laughs> right off the bat. There we go. There it is. Um, narcissism. <laughs> yeah, this is a personal attack against Poon Poon. Poon Poon is worried about his own self. He's worried more than anything about his reputation. Not about whether he hurt Kanye, not about whether he himself is hurt in this situation, not about what he's done, but about what the repercussions will be. It's not, did I do something wrong? What have I done? Which is a reasonable thing for him to think in this circumstance. It would be reasonable for us to open on this scene with Poon Poon with his head in his hand going, oh shit, what have I done? I can't believe it. What I did was just like what Midori did to me. But he doesn't think that way. He hasn't incorporated things that way. Hell, he doesn't even think about what Midori did to him. He's put that in a box in a corner. It's, it's in the lockbox in the corner as far as we can tell. He hasn't brought it up. He didn't even know how to manage it when she was near him. Of course. Of course. Right? He's a kid. He's a child. But this, this is classic. This is classic. Oh, God. Not what have I done. Oh, God. I've opened myself up. I've made a mistake, and now they can ruin me. This is an extension of exactly what Kanye called him out for, and thus we can infer that he has learned nothing. Good. Oh, hi. Okay, then die. So the fact that Poon Poon was worrying about himself at a time like this just proved that he was a- Hey, there it is! That he was a total shit. Poon Poon was sure he'd regret for the rest of his life letting Kanye go home alone in the rain. Hmm. That's an interesting turn. So he does realize it. That's fascinating. The fact that Poon Poon was worrying about himself at a time like this just proved that he was a total shit. Yes, it does. But the fact that he's aware of himself worrying about it in this way and that that proves that he's a total shit, that's the start. That's the first step to self-awareness, right? Pretty cool. This last line, Poon Poon was sure he'd regret for the rest of his life letting Kanye go home alone in the rain. I'm not sure how to take that. We'll see if we get more context. Creek. Oh, chalk, chalk. I don't know what's chalking there. Oh, he's taking his pants off again. Kanye's words repeated over and over. You're a very sad person, Onadera. Poon Poon thought, why is it always like this? Come over here. And he lays naked in the rain. Why do I constantly hurt the people I love? Oof. Spew! Is he... Wee! I splooged big time! What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. Are you sure it'll look okay? Old ladies aggressively trying to look young is painful, you know. Not at all. You could say you're in your 20s, and people would totally believe you. Okay, then. If you were going to give a gift to a young man, do you think sweets are better than flowers? Look at you turning cougar already. Silly. It's just a what if. Poppin' cho cream. Okay, little cream puffs. La 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 la. So, la, la, la. so she's going to go give a gift to Harumi, and her intent was to tell Harumi how she feels and then leave his life, right? Something like that. Ms. Onodera, get permission before you go out next time, okay? Don't be such a stick in the mud. Can't you understand that I wanted to enjoy the freedom of not being attached to an IV? Anyway, I'm being discharged tonight. Oh. What now? The girl in the bed of across from me. Was she released? Oh, yeah, just a little while ago. A boy about her age came to pick her up. Ugh. Shuntaro? 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 Tears. Fuck. Ding. 
finds him standing under an umbrella with the girl. And she walks down out there. And their faces are downcast. They drop their umbrella and embrace. And she's left standing there around the corner. Her hair made up for him. Her sweets. Oh, man. So she returns inside. Um, Miss Onadera got these cream puffs for us. What do you think it means? It is suspicious. Maybe she put metal shavings in them. Matron, call for you on line two. After your x-ray at four, you're going home, so please make sure you're all packed. Oh, Miss Onadera, there's a letter for you. Oh. From Shuntaro. If we ever something, look forward to the stories, I should... Okay, Shuntaro. Dear Miss Onadera, sorry for writing out of the blue. I really wanted to see you again to thank you, but you weren't in your room. What an odd coincidence that you were in the bed across from my girlfriend. I'm sorry I was so rude the other day. I've been thinking about it and realize I'm still... Immature, I assume, in many ways. I'm sorry I was so rude. Okay, I've been thinking about it and I realize I'm still a child in so many ways. Today, I plan to tell her how I feel as honestly as I can. I haven't reached any conclusions and I'm still totally lost, but if she hates me because of it, at least I tried my hardest. This may sound arrogant, but talking to you made me realize that adults are tormented too, and that actually made me feel a little better. Of course, I look up to strong people who are full of confidence, but I feel like I can really trust someone who can be open about their vulnerabilities. People change, they age, and their circumstances change. I don't think there has to be one answer for how to live. I think there's a far more passionate way to live than being satisfied with a single path or torturing yourself in pursuit of that one right answer. Well, that got a little heavy, haha. But I do know that I like people like you. Shh. Shut up. Shut up. You don't understand. You don't understand at all. Okay, hold your breath, please. So then, I'm alone again. Huh? Miss Onodera, you need to hold your breath. Uh. Wah! Ah! <laughs> Fuck. If we ever meet again, I look forward to hearing your stories. I should be a little more mature by then. Ha ha ha. She's cutting her hair again. I don't know what that is, actually. The scissors? I, I don't know, actually. I'm home! How are you? Oh, you cut your hair. What a coincidence. I got mine done, too. Oh, is that Poom Poom? It must be. Uh, because he's not wearing glasses or the hat. Okay. Oh, she's saying you cut your hair. What a coincidence. I got mine done, too. Got it. So Poom Poom has cut all his hair, all his long hair off. So we, get, we do get a changed Poom Poom. Good. Good, good. I haven't been to the grocery store in forever, so I bought loads of stuff. It'll be fun to have a relaxing home-cooked meal every once in a while, don't you think? Wait, what do you like to eat? I guess a teenage boy is happy as long as his stomach is full. Hee <laughs> hee! Stare, stare. Say something, you little shit! How about a welcome home? P.S. Please try to get along with your son. My girlfriend says Ms. Onadera is nice, too. Oh, arg! I really am an idiot. Yes. Oh, hi, Kanye. Oh, hi, God. Wow, I didn't see you back there, God. Fuck off, God. What are you doing? Oh, hey. So, I also want to mention something, because <laughs> this is a total aside, and we're going to have to go back. We're going to have to jump way back to actually talk about it. Um, Throughout the Kanye sequence, we're going to go way back. Throughout the whole Kanye sequence, let's go all the way back to, like... Um... Back over here. So, Art Show, Milky Way, Memories, um, boom, striped leggings, next, uh, nothing, nothing, next, uh, stripes created by the, by the window frames, black and white stripes, um, girl behind her has black and white stripes. Um, again, the stripes behind them in the window frame. Striped umbrella. Black and white striped umbrella. And the black and white striped umbrella is out of the frame, mostly. 
out of the frame mostly, out of the frame mostly, out of the frame mostly, but it's sitting next to Poon Poon this entire time. The black and white stripes. Next to Poon Poon the entire time. And then in the frame where he goes for it, there it is. Right there in frame. Poon Poon got it. He gets it. Wham! And she hands this doll back to him. It is also black and white striped. Drops it on the floor. There it is on the floor. Umbrella and doll caught in between black and white stripes is Poon Poon. Right? Why does this matter? Because it's the couch that he was on when Midori raped him. It's visual representation of him carrying that baggage with him throughout this encounter. Just wanted to mention that. It's a kind of a clever Asano thing. But when we see black and white stripes, it's an indication of Midori. It's a visual motif. A visual element that, that says something. It is a piece of the past. And so I was, I was reminded of it because she's here sitting in that couch now. Fully unaware of what had happened in that couch across from her. Crazy shit. Okay. Next. I don't care if you don't believe what happened last night. I was enveloped in a white light. That's right, and I wouldn't object to calling it a god. Calling it God. I heard a voice. It said, Are you happy with the way you are? I feel reborn. Like I'm much more capable now. It's like the dawning of the world. I... I'm going to do something huge! Whatcha? Fuck. Cultist? For starters, I'm going to level the Tatori sand dunes. Then I'll become a comedian and open a hot pot restaurant in Asakura, uh, Asaka Saka. So, Mimura, how low did you rank on the finals? About 15 from the bottom, I think. Yeah, I can't relate at all, but hang in there. All of a sudden, it's summer. Hey, Onoti, how about we get some hotties at the beach this summer? If we don't get it on, get on it, our youth will be gone. Hey, Mimura, you just looked up my skirt, didn't you? Hell yeah, he did. What? I did not! Is it true that you were the class surf in middle school, Mimura? Did you come here even though it's out of your district so you could escape your past? Hey, hey, wait a minute, missy. Your desperate attempts to make a splash in high school are totally pathetic, especially because you're failing so completely. God, this is brutal. Hey, I saw you walking with an old guy in an expensive suit the other day. You, you slutty slut slut. Ugh, you just made that up. You're disgusting. Disgusting. You can't even begin to understand how I feel. What's wrong with living with... Passion! Man sign! Yaha! Poon Poon didn't really understand what youth was all about. Acting tough, bragging, saying things you shouldn't, not being able to say things you should. It's all just a hassle, Poon Poon thought. What is this? So this is his ranking in class? I see. It's gone way down. Yeah. Points, deviation, ranking. All of his rankings are in the bottom half. Bottom, bottom tenth. Wow. So he's not focused at all. And he's hanging, around, uh, hanging out around some losers. Hey, Hanoti, is it true you've gone cold turkey on masturbation? Why? Are you going to become a monk? When he was grown up, being able to say, I was so young, but those were the good times, seemed almost impossible. Poon Poon was starting to lose the will to live. Oh. Ding, ding. Morning, Onadera. It's been a while, and she hasn't said anything to anyone. Well, what? What? Well, of course- Oh, her hair is growing. What? Well, of course, if you leave it alone, hair grows. Short hair suits you, Onadera. It's so nice out. It just stopped storming yesterday. I hear the rainy season's over now. Kanye, let's go! Sorry, I need to go. Bye-bye. A cordial interaction! It seems like she might have forgiven you for a gross, a gross mistake that you made. <laughs> That's pretty big of her. <sighs> How will he interpret that? Actually, Poon Poon had already lost any shred of confidence. Batter hits the first pitch. It's long, it's long, it's going. Will it stretch? Will it go in? It's in. Home run. Ms. Onodera? What's she writing? I don't know. Ms. Onodera, whoa, just scared, don't scare me, I just peed a little. The Giants come back at the last minute and win it with a two-run home run. I've been calling your name. You're writing a letter? Haha, <laughs> that's so not like you. Never mind, leave me alone. Um, Ms. Onodera, you seem to be recovering well from surgery. 
After we remove your stitches today, you can go home. Doctor, my side is really tingly, and when I see you, my heart pounds. Oh, that's neuralgia, caused by the surgery. No need to worry, it'll go away eventually. That's it? I didn't need to worry? <laughs> Actually, Miss Onodera, yes? Have you ever had a cancer screening? Oh shit, is she gonna have breast cancer? Ding. From the looks of this CT scan, I have cancer? Well, we can't say for certain until we run some tests. But you're young, so if it is cancer, prob it's probably aggressive. Shit. Oh, doctor. <laughs> this is a bad time to be calling me young. Oh. We can fight it, Miss Onodera. High school for Poon Poon didn't involve being the class surf or having his shoes hidden. It was very normal. Where's Onati? He's probably taking a dump. Kanye seemed to have buried deep in her heart the savage act Poon Poon had perpetrated. Possibly she was an angel incarnate. Quite possible. Or she doesn't want to face the possibility that you, you might be a monster. But I don't think she thinks you're a monster. I think she thinks you made a mistake. And I think Kanye is a seriously good person to the point where she's probably too good for her own good. And she has probably, in her heart, forgiven you. Not buried it deep within, within her heart, but forgiven you. That's my expectation here. But can you forgive yourself, Poon Poon? No. And will you hold that for the rest of your life? Yeah, for sure. Ooh, look, black and white lines. Interesting. Oh. My God. To Mr. Poon Poon Onodera, Papa Poon Yama. She's been writing the letters the whole time? Has she been writing the letters the whole time? The, sh the shitty dumb letters that he gets from his dad? Yo. And there she is at that corner. Right there. That mailbox. Maybe there were more kind and honest people living the best they could day to day than Poon Poon had given life credit for. It was a thought. Looking at the stupidly blue sky, Poon Poon felt like he wanted to apologize to the whole world. Laying out there on the roof. Don't take your clothes off on the roof of a school, Poon Poon. Poon Poon understood clearly that there was no God. There was only a stagnant, rotten soul lying around without purpose. Isn't this a bit long for Onati to be taking a dump? Yeah! If everything in the world, good, bad, or otherwise, came from people's hearts, then there was only one thing Poon Poon could do now. I'll never fall in love again. The warm winds wrapping around him made Poon Poon want to cry, so he softly closed his eyes. That's enough for today. Good night, Poon Poon. But that's not the end of the volume. Oh my god, we're doing it again? Oh shit, fuck. The last time we did one of these, it, it destroyed everything. We're doing another time skip? Two years later. Fucking dick nipples. Oh my god. All right. 93 degrees, two years later. Honestly, I don't understand why these old people who finished raising kids and aren't working anymore are still alive. Holy shit. Especially the ones with the arrogant attitude, like they're not going to rely on us young people to take care of them soon. If all they do with their lives is watch TV and play pachinko, it's better ecologically if they just die. Shut up, stupid. Someone will hear. You'll be fine. You're a very strong woman. So the test results are in. You're the big sister, so you need to take care of everything. What? Who is this? Big si- Oh, that's Yuichi. So the test results are in. You're the big sister, so you need to take care of everything. Big boobs, big boobs, boobies, boobies. You don't need me. You'll be fine by yourself. You got it, Yuichi? 
Don't tell Dad and Mom. I can take care of this myself. At the end of the day, the only person you can rely on is yourself. The only thing you can truly believe in is yourself. Bub bubbles blowing. You know, I don't want to be the one to say it, but I don't know anyone else who has the self-confidence I do. I feel like I'll get everything I've ever wanted. You're right. I think you might pull off something big one day. Right? You can't be pigeonholed, right, baby? But I feel like a vaguely self-confident person who might just end up with nothing. Yeah, yeah. You have cancer. Seriously? You're going to marry Punyama? You can't be a mom. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Mrs. Punyama, we can see your baby's head. <laughs> I understand that you're a very lonely person. You are the most important thing to me in the world, and you need me. You say that, but you're off to work again tomorrow, liar. I'm a juicy 30-something married woman. I'll be waiting to hear from you adult gen gentlemen overflowing with carnal desire. Go, go! You, you ruined my life. So have the decency to die with me, young Poon Poon with his Gundam. Hey, that's a real Gundam. Look at that. Look at that. That's a Gundam. Hee <laughs> hee, just kidding. Of course I'm kidding. So please, don't look at me like that. Oh, holy shit. Oh, holy shit, she is on chemo. Hard. Sis? Can you hear me? It's Midori. Look, Poon Poon's here too. She is in a bad fucking way. Of course, she's dying from the chemo. Because it's poison. It's what it is. Chemotherapy is poisoning yourself to hopefully kill the cancer first. Fucking shit. No black and white lines in this frame, even though Midori's here. Interesting. Poon Poon, do you still hate me? You do. <laughs> I did a lot of terrible things to you. You know, I don't love you a bit either. Thanks, Mom. This is what I needed to hear. Because that's the kind of relationship we have, right? You know, I think I'm going to die soon. Poon Poon, let me see you. Poon Poon, I'm scared. I'm scared of dying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Poon Poon. But really, I love you very much. <sighs> 98 degrees. Hotter in the summer. Crematorium. And there's Yuichi. Midori. People coming to offer their condolences. apartment. Yuichi, Midori, Poon Poon. Poon Poon didn't love his mother, even at the very end. Holy shit, is that his father? Dad is back. And thus ends part six of Oyasumi Poon Poon. Hello, family without family. After completed many years of com complicated body mod surgeries, Papa comes standard with metallic skin and eight 12-inch missiles. Can Poon Poon defeat this super-enhanced human battleship? Professor Lettuce's nanobots are his only hope, so Poon Poon devises a daring secret plan to wipe the floor with the tremendous odds he's up against. What's the plot, Poon Poon? Find out next time on Goodnight Poon Poon. The rise of Papa Poon Poon! Sure. <laughs> sure, of course. This is Dragon Ball Z now. Ennio Asano, a bona fide earthling, was born in Ibaraki, Japan in 1980. In 2001, his short story, Hello from Outer Space, won the first Sunday GX Rookie Prize. Later, GX published his series, Subarashi Sekai, Available Wonderful World, uh, uh, available in English from Viz Media as What a Wonderful World. His other works include Hikari no Machi, City of Light, Nijigahara Holograph, and Umibe no Ona no Ko, A Girl on the Shore. 
as well as Solanine. Also, oh, I've heard about that. Also available from Viz, Viz Media. I've read a couple of Vasano's works, but not all of them. And that's the end. Fuck. Shit. God, I didn't expect that last turn, man. Okay, I want to I wanna determine something really quickly that I think is really important. The letter that she's writing, I... Feels like something baseball. The Giants played today, bottom of the ninth. Home run winning the... Yeah. Yeah. So she's listening to the radio to hear the Giants play so that she can write a letter from Poom Poom Papa to Poon Poon. And she's been doing this every time that there's been one of these letters. That is... That is right on the fucking money. God, I fucking hate this shit. I, again... I'm a person who has a deeply complicated non-relationship with my mother. We don't, we haven't spoken in years. And there are serious and plenty of reasons for that. It doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't make it much easier to know that it's to a most extent justified. And it really doesn't make it easier to see a scene like this. Where we see this woman say on her deathbed to her son, I don't really love you. Moments after we've read her doing an act of pure love. Sending him these letters. Now, it's, it's an ill-formed act. It's ill-suited. Poon Poon doesn't like these letters. They make him... They, they seem stupid to him. But she doesn't know that. She's trying in her own way with, you know, projecting her own desperation for Poonyama Papa, right? Her own desire for, for having that man back, which we have seen. She told Harumi about it. I just want him to come back. I wanted him to say, I'm sorry, it'll be okay. Say all these things and it would have been okay. I still love him. She sees that and projects that onto Poon Poon. And so she chooses to take his place. Papa Poonyama is gone. But his letters continue. And they're not from him. And now he's about to arrive in Poon Poon's life. And there's a good chance that we'll find out that they weren't from him. And discover, as ill-formed as it might be, that his mother was doing this for him the entire time. That's brutal. That fucking hurts. That fucking hurts. And it adds a whole lot to this scene. Two years later. Well, first off, we jump through these life-flashing-before-your-eyes moments, because that's what this is, essentially, right? I don't know what this is. So the test results are in, you're the big sister, so you need to take care of everything? I don't understand that. I just don't. And I don't know where they, the two of them go together. Don't tell dad or mom. I can take care of this myself. And the backpack? Oh. Are they... Are they making fun of Yuichi because his sister has big boobs? I think so. And I think that's probably his backpack that's been trashed and written all over. But I don't know. The context here is un uncertain. I feel like I'll get everything I ever wanted. We see her hair in the moment, the way that she actually is now. Flashing through these moments when she was young, young. I think you might pull off something big one day, but she never does. And those are the same girls. You're going to marry Poonyama? You can't be a mom. All of these things are bubbles, ethereal, ephemeral. I'll, get, I'll bet that's a personal ad that she put out. I'm a juicy 30-something married woman. You still hate me. You do. I don't love you a bit either. This moment, Poon Poon let me see you and putting her withered hands on him. This is so deeply real. And then, the truth of every person, no matter what, I'm scared. I'm scared of dying. When you look your mortality, when you look your mortality in the face, you say the things that you really mean. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But really, I love you very much. 
as a takeaway from this. It was a really important one and a useful one. It's almost, it's unfortunate, it's really unfortunate that a deep truth has turned into a cliche. And one that sort of, when you hear a thing often enough and it's cliche enough, it sort of just bounces off your brain. We take it as an idiom and take its meaning and then don't really investigate it or apply it or incorporate it. The idea is simple. Live like you're dying. The reason for it is also simple. You actually are. You are actually dying. Every day that you're awake, you are closer to death. And every day that you're alive, there's a chance that you'll get hit by a bus or a meteor. <laughs> Possible. Or get cancer. Or get sick. Or get shot. Or fall off something. Or break yourself. Any number of things. You're always dying and you are mortal. And if you live with that in mind, I think there's a chance, if you're a little bit lucky and a lot dedicated to living that way, there's a chance that you can end up on your deathbed where you will go no matter what. There's no avoiding it. But there's a chance that if you live like you're already there, you, will, you can end up on that bed without a regret like this, without one of these, without something that you can't apologize enough for, without an unforgiven sin that you carry as guilt into, the, into wherever. Live like you're dying. Say what you need to the, to the people who are close to you. Apologize early, even if you don't think you're at fault. Forgive quickly, even if you think they don't deserve it. Don't live like this, and don't die like this. Because you will be afraid. You will be, you will be scared. And those guilts will weigh on you. Live for that moment. Shit. Good night, Mama Punyama. You were a raging bitch. But you tried once or twice. You tried. And like everyone else, you were not perfect. But you did try. And in these last moments, you tried hard. Good night, Mama Punyama. And good night to all of you. We're going to wrap there. Thanks so much for watching. Next episode on the Patreon. See you next week for more otherwise. Peace.